Mr. Girish Kumar Kadam. He has been with ICRA for nearly 17 years as a vice president and group co-head for corporate ratings at ICRA. He is the in charge of business and infrastructure ratings and research with a focus on power utilities, renewables and engineering. Since 2006, he has played an important role in integrating integrated rating of state-owned utilities on behalf of the Ministry of Power, PFC and RAC. Today, Mr. Girish Kumar will talk about Power TND, their outlook and challenges. So, delegates, let's welcome Mr. Girish Kumar Kadam. I will have a brief presentation on this topic, uh, the Indian Power TND sector outlook and challenges. So, first, I will cover the outlook and the demand drivers for the power transmission segment. Uh, before I talk about, you know, the overall uh, capacity addition and the investment requirement in the uh, transmission, I must talk about the demand driver for the same through the renewable investment. So I have a couple of slides on the renewable investment outlook. So, uh, you know, this slide talks about the fundamental demand drivers for the renewable energy sector in the long run. Clearly, the policy focus in the renewables is pretty strong. Uh, this is clearly evident from the fact that uh, there is a policy target of 500 gigawatt by 2030. And, uh, you know, overall regulatory support is also well established through the RPO trajectory. In fact, the RPO trajectory is clearly laid out till FY 2030, or right from 23% stipulated for the current year, uh, all the way up to 43% odd uh, by FY 2030. So overall policy focus is strong, regulatory dynamics are well established. Uh, the tariff competitiveness for the renewables is pretty superior, you know, from the ultimate off takers perspective. Ultimate off takers are the state-owned distribution utilities, the big tariffs, both for the wind and the solar utility space, uh, continues to remain quite cost competitive, less than 3 rupees a unit, and that is quite competitive from the discounts perspective. Overall, you know, the uh, the RE tariffs are quite attractive, uh, even from the CNI counterparties, and that's a win-win proposition in the open access uh, model as such. And we are increasingly seeing a greater traction in the open access based RE investments as well, thanks to the sustainability focus and the uh, lots of initiatives coming from that uh, segment from uh, uh, many of uh, you know the CNI consumers. In fact, the sustainability focus has improved quite drastically over the last couple of years from the variety of the CNI players. So these are the fundamental you know, demand drivers you know, for the RE investment in the long run. So with that, uh, purely this is the regulatory uh, you know, support that is there currently in the sector through the RPO trajectory norm, uh, which is going, you know, showing an increase from 24.6% in FY23, all the way up to 43% odd by 2030, uh, we expect you know, the incremental RE capacity addition requirement uh, to remain at about 220 to 240 gigawatt. And that to translate the annual capacity addition requirement of anywhere close to 30 gigawatt every year as against the current level of you know 13 to 14 gigawatt which we have seen in the last couple of years and of course large part of this capacity addition within the renewables will be driven by the solar segment so this itself is a fundamental you know demand driver you know for the transmission strengthening requirements which i will discuss in the subsequent slide if you talk about the overall re mix in the energy grid uh, that is also showing an uptick and uh, it will slowly increase in favor of RE over the next 8 to 10 years. If you talk about RE penetration currently in terms of the overall energy mix is about 12% currently in FY22. Uh, that is uh, you know, estimated to increase to about 28% by uh, FY30. In the base case scenario that we have, assuming the cumulative uh, RE capacity were to reach at about 350 gigawatts, including the hydro. In the most optimistic scenario, if RE plus hydro were to touch uh, 400 gigawatt as per the RPO target, uh, the overall RE penetration would uh, be even further higher to the extent of 32%, uh, which is only RE excluding the large hydro. So with that background, you know, I also must say that while the RE share is increasing, the dependency on the coal is, uh, uh, while it uh, will show some decrease, but it will still remain an important fuel from the energy, you know, standpoint as far as India's energy sector is concerned. Now, very important fact here is the fact that the RE share is increasing, uh, it would also require a corresponding strengthening in the grid infrastructure along with the storage capabilities. And that's where, you know, the, the, the transmission strengthening requirements are going to be massive. In fact, uh, we have already started witnessing, you know, the, the focus on the transmission strengthening scheme through number of policy initiatives. Right. Uh, uh, what we saw is in FY22, uh, in fact, uh, you know, there has been an award of almost 11 projects, you know, through the TBCB route, you know, in FY22. Uh, in fact, uh, 10 more projects uh, were also awarded, uh, you know, uh, during the TBCB route in the last year. In FY23, so far in the current year, three projects have been commissioned. 
six projects have been awarded by the central you know uh, you know bidding agencies and 31 projects are currently under construction so significant project activity is currently under implementation of course lot more needs to be done uh, in fact ca has come out with a, a long term transportation planning report very recently in the month of uh, december 22 and if you look at those key report highlights the incremental requirements in the transportation strengthening uh, uh, segment to meet this policy target scenario of 500 gigawatt by 2030 are going to be literally massive almost 2.5 lakh crore you know worth of uh, incremental transmission investments are required over the next uh, you know 7 to 8 years so in that context you know the timely uh, issuance of project award uh, you know the time bound execution of this transmission project uh, would be all the more important right uh, because uh, you know any transmission project uh, would typically require at least you know 36 to 42 months In fact we have seen uh, even greater delays in execution of the transportation project uh, because of various issues I mean whether it is a land acquisition or ROW related issues whether it is approvals or post major events and so on and so forth so we have seen that kind of you know execution bottleneck in roll out of the transportation network on the other hand if you talk about RE capacity addition that is quicker you know the, the pace of the RE capacity addition will be faster with a week you know with the kind of gestation cycle that ha- that is there for the transportation network flow out so which is why you know there has to be a fast track approach there has to be equal one and solid focus in terms of uh, planning of this transportation network and the capacity addition in the transportation network uh, uh, going forward uh, you know so as to ensure that the great stability is maintained great adequacy is maintained you know to absorb you know the larger share of the renewables that we are going to witness going forward so that that's the you know the demand driver and the key takeaway from this slide if you look at the fundamentally uh, you know the transportation segment uh, you know this is the number of projects that we analyze uh, from the rating perspective you know the overall credit profile of the transportation entities is uh, by and large stable thanks to you know uh, you know the the stable uh, you know business risk uh, you know profile thanks to annuity a uh, nature of uh, you know the business profile or the revenue profile with a high degree of revenue visibility thanks to you know the the poc mechanism uh, which is currently in place wherein the cchu takes the responsibility of you know collecting the transmission charges as per the revenue share agreement or as per the tss from the various you know beneficiary user of the network and in turn that uh, passed on by the cchu to the various isps licenses so thanks to poc framework you know overall collection efficiencies continue to remain quite stable and quite healthy you know for all the transmission players and which is why we have a stable outlook uh, you know sector outlook on the transmission space so that's brief about in terms of the outlook and in terms of the investment pipeline and the you know the requirements going forward for the transmission side i will move on to the trans- distribution side briefly of course the distribution side is is dominated by the state owned distribution utilities and you are all all of you are aware that you know the, the financial health of the state discom is is a major area of concern for the entire power sector that continues to remain weak and that is facing lots of headwinds you know from the rising cost you know modest tariff hikes and so on and so forth so if you look at the tariff revision scenario for the distribution entities uh, i mean this chart talks about you know the the uh, discipline in the uh, issuance of tariff orders in fy23 we saw uh, you know the the uh, utilities in 25 states okay uh, uh, having received the tariff order for fy23 and out of 25 you know tariff orders in 16 uh, states we saw uh, an upward tariff revision and the median tariff revision in fy23 is about just 2% in fact uh, although it is uh, uh, relatively better with the way what we saw in fy21 and fy22 which was almost nil uh, because of you know various uh, cost pressures and uh, challenges coming because of the covid uh, pandemic scenario so while FY23 is relatively better, but having said that, it is still lower than what has been proposed, you know, by uh, many of the state discom with the uh, SCRs in terms of their tariff petition filing. So overall, you know, the tariff hikes which have been received by the state discoms over the historically over the last five six years, you know, has been pretty modest, anywhere in the range of one to three percent, as is clearly evident from this chart. And uh, in in number of states and in fact in some of the majority of the states major states i would say the likes of rajasthan and tamil nadu we saw very large delay in the tariff determination process for example in fy23 tariff order was pending for fairly large period of time which got subsequently released in september 22 right 
so that's the overall you know tariff uh, from the determination scenario that's one of the clear headwinds uh, smart metering layout is also one of the focus areas under the uh, you know the capex uh, you know scheme which has been outlined by the government two years before although the progress on the smart meter layout is still uh, subdued it's pretty much on slow track and lot of action is required going forward because that will also lead to improvement in the operational efficiency part i mean in terms of reducing the latency loss level for a sector as a whole and as a result if you look at the overall financial indicators you know the the book losses and the cash gap numbers for the state owned distribution entities on a overall basis continue to remain quite weak uh, fy23 estimate is about 60 paisa per unit and uh, that is uh, still higher with the fy22 uh, and uh, it's also because of inadequate tariffs and continuing high level of operational inefficiency so that is a matter of concern and as a result what is happening is you know the overall debt dependency for uh, the the distribution sector as a whole is going up and uh, that is very much evident from the fact that uh, the estimated debt number for the state discoms on an overall basis is crossing uh, you know 6 lakh crore as on march 22 and on top of that we are we have seen the implementation of the liquidity uh, relief scheme you know the uh, you know the uh, we have also recently yeah. seen the implementation of the lex payment surcharge scheme wherein the debt being awaited right Uh, backed by the state government guarantee, you know, by the uh, state discoms, and all that is going to get added in the overall debt numbers for the state discoms going forward. So the the debt burden is going up, and that essentially to meet, you know, the cash losses incurred by the discoms because of the underlying uh, issues which are still continuing. And uh, other important factor from the discoms perspective is the subsidy dependence that is pretty much inherent and uh, uh, for all the state discoms because of the subsidy announcement towards the agricultural consumers, uh, below poverty line residents. Financial consumers, and by the way, the subsidy outgo uh, the, in the percentage share has also gone up. In FY23, estimate is almost 20% of the revenue is coming through state government subsidies, and uh, uh, in that context, the you know the timeliness and the adequacy of uh, the subsidy receipts, you know, from the respective state government to the state discoms, is also equally important. Else, otherwise, it has a direct impact on the cash flow position of the state discom, uh, which we have seen in the past. I mean, if you look at the overall subsidy receipt as a percentage of the billed amount is about 90 to 95 percent in the past. It has come down in uh, FY21 uh, because of the pandemic pressure. Moving on to you know the some of the recent policy announcements for the discom is the LPS scheme implementation. That is something which is incrementally positive because it has uh, resulted in liquidity relief for number of uh, you know IPPs, including the uh, CPSUs, the RE IPPs, and the Tamil Gen Code, and it has helped to curtail the you know the overdues uh, to uh, some extent because the, all the overdues as of May end 2022 are getting liquidated through EMI scheme and. Which Which is getting funded through debt uh, coming from the the nodal agencies to the discoms backed by the state government guarantee. So incrementally positive, but that's not a long-term solution to resolve the discom problem. Discoms problems are structural, and that will require adequate tariffs, adequate and timely you know disbursement of the subsidies. More importantly, a very very solid focus in curtailing the operational inefficiencies in terms of ATC loss reduction. So those are the you know the the panacea for. you know the discoms problems to get resolved more in a sustained manner going forward and as a result what is required as i said the efficiency improvement and the tariff adequacy will be the key factors to watch out right and uh, there are number of policy initiatives which the government has announced in terms of launch of the capex scheme which is 3 lakh crore worth of capex scheme in two parts you know where the scheme requires a very time bound implementation by all the participating discoms right because the the agenda and the objective here is to curtail the distribution loss level To the extent of 12 to 15 percent by FY 2025. Uh, so for one percentage reduction in the ATC loss level, there will be a cost relief of almost 4 to 5 thousand crore for the system as a whole. So that is something which is fundamental. On top of that, there is also a policy initiative to through the scheme uh, for allowing and incentivizing the discoms to go for segregation of the feeders, solarization of the feeders. That could also provide a very significant cost relief, given the fact that the RE tariffs have become more and more cost competitive. More importantly, the FCA implementation and the adequacy of the tariff that is something which is fundamental and that is uh, still missing in number of states so all these initiatives will certainly play out a very a uh, good effect in terms of bringing out the sustained financial improvement uh, you know improvement uh, in the uh, uh, in the discoms credit profile you know going forward so in the finally in terms of the outlook and because of all this weakness in the state discoms credit profile you know we have a negative outlook on the state discoms i mean the distribution as a segment right 
while i said transmission has a stable outlook distribution has still a negative outlook because of these underlying issues uh, related to the state discount and the key triggers for revision in the negative outlook for the distribution segment would be depending on a the reduction in the 18c loss levels how fast they get reduced uh, beyond 18% number 2 how fast the cash cap number get uh, you know that reduced going forward because right now it's about 60 65 paisa so the extent of reduction in the cash gap will be a key monitorable from the outlook standpoint and more importantly the tariff discipline so these are the fundamental factors which will lead to you know uh, uh, which will be relevant from the outlook uh, perspective as far as the distribution sector is concerned transmission has a stable outlook so these are you know the the, the you know the few perspective slides that i wanted to share on uh, tnd outlook and the challenges